this is going to be the year, said everyone everywhere. But bear with me, there are actually a few content resolutions that I want you to make for 2021. And I'm going to mini coach you through how to stick with them. So if you're looking to become that go to expert, become more consistent with your content or make more ching with your content, let's get resoluting. <music> Hey there, Empire Builders. Welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, my name is Haley Dale, and I am a content and sales funnel strategist, helping you create more profitable, purposeful, and yes, productive content as well. So if that sounds like what you're looking for, click the subscribe button down below this video for regular value packed videos, just like this every single Monday. I love beginnings, whether it's a blank page, whether it's January 1st, September 1st, whether it is just a new bottle of shampoo and getting to open it. I love the thrills of starting off on a fresh foot, a new leaf, so to say. But like most people, I go into those new days, those fresh starts with the best of intentions. And lo and behold, a couple of weeks later, those things are forgotten. So I think it's something like 80% of people set New Year's resolutions and don't stick with them. This is a video about that. Because I think when it comes to our resolutions, we are setting like really big things or setting way too many of them, when really, we could take a much more streamlined and simplified approach towards it. And so I have three content resolutions that I want to coach you through setting this year and sticking with them, because these are the things that I hear the most from my clients once we get through their funnel and they're ready to actually use their content to drive traffic towards it or my students or my readers. So these are the three things that most people are saying that they want to achieve with their content. So the number one thing is getting more consistent with their content, right? Having those systems in place, having a frequency they can manage. So getting consistent with content. The second thing is becoming that go-to expert. So enough of you feel like that best kept secret, right? You know what you're talking about only if other people knew about it. And then the third thing, at the end of the day, because we are in business, we want to make sure that you're making money with your content. We want to prove, we want to see that there's an ROI between the efforts that you're putting into your content and what you're getting out on the back end. So I'm going to walk you through those three resolutions, starting with content resolution number one, getting more consistent with content. The biggest thing that I can say about getting more consistent with your content is that most people are trying to do too many things. Even if they were like, even if they had a hundred clones of themselves, these kinds of plans that I'm seeing people come up with are things that like nobody could stick to. And so what I want to encourage you is to redefine what consistent means to you. Redefine for yourself, for your life, and for your what you want to get out of content, what that means for you. That doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be doing every single platform. And it definitely doesn't mean that you should be blogging every single day. So the first step of getting more consistent with your content is to decide on what your focus platforms are going to be. So I have a framework that I call the ease framework when it comes to your content channels and picking which ones to focus on. I'm going to drop a video over here or over there, wherever, but I want you to go and watch that. It's all about the ease framework. And basically what it means is that I want you to focus on having four different platforms that you're going to focus on. So the first platform is for educating. So what platform are you going to use to educate your people? So usually this is some form of blogging, whether it's a YouTube video like this or a blog, some kind of way of getting your ideas out there and getting people back to your website. The second thing is an attraction strategy or platform. So where, what kind of platform are you using to get in front of new people? So what are you doing to bring in new qualified leads, getting your content in front of them. So this might be things like Facebook ads. It might be things like guest posting or podcast interviews. It might be things like Pinterest is a great attraction platform. Then we want to focus on the S part. So the sell part of things. So one strategy or platform that you're using to basically sell your goods. So for me, this comes always down to email marketing. I think email marketing has the highest ROI when it comes to selling with your content. And it's just a great way to cultivate 
create connection and stay in touch with people. So I think pick one that is for selling. So what is your strategy? It could be retargeting ads. It could be it could be speaking in person, although maybe not this year or this coming year. And then the fourth platform is a platform for engaging. So where are you going to have those conversations with people? So this would be Instagram, right? Or this might be Facebook groups, or this could be like online networking. It might be Reddit. It might be wherever you're having those kinds of conversations. But as you can see here, instead of trying to do everything, I'm really narrowing it down to four. And I want to make sure that I have one for every single one of those types of content or those purposes that I have for my content. So that really simplifies things. So we've narrowed it down to four platforms that you're going to focus on. And you can switch your focus. I say keep your focus for 90 days, so a quarter at a time. And then you can reevaluate and measure and see if there's something that you want to switch up and maybe try. So narrowing it down to four platforms instead of 13, which is the average that people are content marketers and business owners are trying to keep up with, it's going to just your efforts are going to go a lot further faster. And then the second piece of this with being more consistent with your content is choosing a frequency that works for you and committing to it fully. And I want you to start with something that feels too easy, right? Because right now, with the best intentions with that new fresh start, <laughs> you're like, giving yourself way more credit once life actually starts taking over and just distractions start getting in the way. So pick a frequency that feels too easy. So is that weekly for you? Is that monthly? Is that biweekly? And if you end up doing more than that, fantastic. If you don't, if you just stick to that frequency, fantastic. So you want to pick a frequency that you're actually going to be able to maintain because once you master monthly or once you master putting out a blog post bi-weekly or weekly, then if you want to add more to it, you can do that, right? Because you've already mastered a frequency and made it feel easy. So adding one more on won't feel, so you can work your way up to whatever that, so if you went in and you're like, I want to do a weekly blog post, but that feels way too hard. You can start with bi-weekly and then when you're ready to build your way up to that weekly, you you can do that. So that is one great way of staying consistent with your content. We want to think about frequency and we want to think about narrowing down on your platforms. The second content resolution that I want you to focus on is establishing yourself as a go-to expert. So using your content to build your expertise. What is great about content is that there are two sides of this expertise coin. So number one, you're going to be communicating your expertise to people who need what it is you're really good at. And so that's a great way to put that content in front of them, help people, but also attract them and position yourself as somebody who can help them with their bigger issues or their bigger problems in that area of expertise. And then the second thing, if you're like, I ain't no expert, I'm just figuring this out as I go, or I don't feel as qualified as so-and-so over here or so-and-so over here. So another place that your content can play is helping you develop that expertise. So as we create content, as we like outline our videos, as we map them out, as we go and create them, or as we write that blog post, that is part of the process of developing our expertise as well. So it's going to make you feel more confident in your area of expertise, as well as let people know know about it as well. So when you're not feeling so, so confident about the expertise word, this is a great way to ease your way into it. So my number one tip for positioning yourself as an expert with your content. It's so simple. Wait, this is going to blow minds. So my top tip for establishing yourself as an expert is as simple as this. Even if you're just starting out, it's just being of service. So instead of going into your content or going into your lives or going into your social media posts being like, I'm going to be the expert, what you want to do instead is just think, I'm going to be of the most service. I'm going to help the most people. I'm going to find something that I can help people with. And so when it comes to our content, we want to make sure that we are finding our audience's problems. So who are the people that you want to be working with and what problems do they have? What are their little day to day annoyances when it comes to the area of expertise that you're working in? And can you create bite-sized pieces of content that solve that problem or solve some aspect of that problem? So it's as simple as that. Your one-stop check for making sure that you are coming from a place of service with each new pieces of content you create. Ask yourself, number one, is this something that my potential clients, the people that I want to be working with are struggling with? And number two, have I provided a solution? It's as simple as that. But I do have a blog post or a video that is all about five secrets to content that establishes you as an expert and you can go and check it out over here. 
Our third and final content resolution for 2021 is to make more sales with your content. At the end of the day, you are a business and content or blogging or social media, whatever type of content that you're creating is a tool in your business towards that end goal. And so we want to make sure that there's an ROI to your content so that you can continue to do it and you can see your bottom line grow because of the efforts that you're putting in. And so the number one tip I have here is make sure that your content Content actually leads to your products or services. So you wouldn't believe the number of times I've had potential clients come to me in the agency or students in your content, your empire, my program come to me and they say, I have this amazing service. I have this amazing product. It's going to change lives, but I'm not selling any. That's the problem. I'm not getting enough leads. I'm not getting enough inquiries. I'm not getting enough people purchasing on my sales page. And so what we realize is that once we dig a little bit deeper in most cases is that the content content that they're putting out there has nothing to do with this product or service, or it's very loosely connected where we'd have to do some major stretches to make those connections. And so the number one piece of advice that I have for you is to reverse engineer all of the content that you create from your offer. So we want to put your offer at the center of your content strategy. And from there, come up with topics for your Facebook lives, come up with topics for your blog posts, come up with an idea for that lead magnet that's going to get you a list of validated and highly qualified prospects for your service or your product. So we want to make sure that we are getting the right people into your pipeline for that product or that service. And so the number one thing that I can encourage you to do here is I want you to look at the current freebies that you have in your business. And I want you to do a simple binary yes, no check. Does this relate to my product, one of my products or services? If yes, keep it. If no, can it be switched? Can you tweak it a little bit? Or the tough decisions at the end of the day, does it have to go? The biggest content resolution though, a bonus one here, is to not let content overwhelm you. Allow yourself to truly start fresh and don't judge yourself based on your past efforts. Just realize that maybe you weren't setting yourself up for success and maybe it's time to simplify to these three content resolutions, getting more consistent, making more sales, and becoming that go-to expert. And all of the other things will be a product of focusing on those three things. So if you want help with all of these three content resolutions, check out my content campaign generator. It helps you create content that positions you as that expert, helps you get consistent, and also proves an ROI for that content project. So I'll put the link below this video. It's a great little tool to check out. So what is your content resolution? Tell me in the comments. And if you want more videos like this one, make sure to click on the next video or make sure to subscribe for new videos just like this one every single Monday.